Hello and welcome once again to CanonBlogger.com, home of the Learning Digital Photography Podcast. Going to share with you a little tip today on how to create an action that will accomplish two things. Number one, apply a border to an image, and number two, apply a logo or a graphic to that image as well. So if you want your company logo, you can get that done. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time here, so we'll just go ahead and get things started. You'll notice that as I'm going through this process, I have two palettes open. I have the actions palette on the left and the layers palette on the right. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start the process here by creating a new action. And I'm going to call the action border and logo. And I'm going to start recording because I want this to remember everything that I'm doing. And inside the actions or inside the layers palette here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this background. I'm going to change this layer from a background layer to an editable layer. And you'll notice over on the action side, it's remembering that process. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer effect for this layer. Because remember, we're going to be outputting to a separate folder. And I'm going to change the stroke from outside to inside. And I'm going to change the color from red to black. And now that that's been applied, I'm going to actually change the image size because I want to add another border around the outside edge and to do that I need a larger size canvas. Now here it's important to note you're going to want to change this from um, a, a, a hard uh, set of dimension for like inches or centimeters or millimeters to a percent size because that way it'll be relative to the image rather than uh, a specific dimension because if you're working on a larger image then you may not see as much of a distinction there. So I have that set as a percentage and the next step is going to be to create a new layer underneath the existing layer. So I'm going to use control new layer on the Windows uh, computer on the Mac. It'll be command new layer and that creates it below. Then I'm going to do a shift backspace and that's going to fill uh, that with the foreground color here. My foreground color is set to white so I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK. Then I'm going to apply a layer effect to that as well and that's just going to be another inside stroke here. And you can see how it's doing all this over on the action side. So I'm just going to go to the inside and I'm going to change the color to black and I'm going to commit that. So now we have a nice interior and exterior border. And then the next step is going to be to go back up to this layer because I'm going to be doing a placement now. And I'm going to place a copyright logo inside of there. Now if you've got a company logo or a business logo or a letterhead logo that you want to apply, you can use that. Here I'm just doing a copyright image that I created. And let me show you something here real quick. You'll notice that the size is 5,000 pixels uh, wide and tall. So it's a pretty large document. You want to make sure your logo is relatively large because you want to be able to fit it on any size document you make. If you make it too small and then you open up a larger image to apply it to, it's going to be a lot smaller and you're going to get a lot of jagged edges. Just something you don't want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that uh, placement to this image and you see how it's just dead center. I'm just going to leave it alone for the time being because the whole purpose here is to show you how to do this and you can tweak it to your own ends. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to rasterize this layer so I can make it more editable uh, in the current document. And then I'm going to change the opacity from 100% to 50%. And I'll tell you what, let's make that 25%. Make it a little more opaque so it's not as blatant inside the image. And I'll commit that. And it's also adding it over here on the actions palette. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how you're going to create a border and add a logo to an image. If you wanted to place it down in a corner, you could do that. But at this point, pretty much what I'm going to do is stop the recording. So now I have this border and logo action set. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the document out. And we're going to run this action um, on a whole bunch of images. And to do that, uh, simply go down to your file, uh, your file menu and go to scripts and image processor and then inside here is where you can specify which actions you want applied to a batch of images. And I have my folder set where the default images are that I want and I'm going to select it to save out to the same location. Now it's going to save it in a subfolder that Photoshop calls JPEG. That's fine, you can just leave it alone. I'm not going to resize it. You might want to resize it here if you're going to create a thumbnail. I'm not going to do that. And then down here is where you can run the action. And you have all these different folders, default actions, demos. And inside of here, I've got the border and logo one. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. And I'm going to apply run 
to this set of images. Now there's 12 images in here, so this is going to take a while. I'm going to let this go ahead and run through, and we can watch it here for a minute while I talk to you a little bit about the different effects that you can do. You want to make sure that you are recording your action from beginning to end. So for example, that part where I change the initial image from a background layer to an editable layer, you want to make sure that's part of the image as well, otherwise you can run into errors. Uh, you want to make sure you're doing that kind of thing because those errors can really cause problems because it'll stop in the middle of each image if it tries to do something that can't be done. So if, for example, if you didn't do that um, uh, background to a layer inside of the action and then you went to start recording and you were changing the stroke on that Photoshop couldn't do that if it was trying to apply it to a locked background layer so it would stop for each image and if you had a hundred images you'd have to go in and make those changes on each image which is what the whole purpose of the action is here so you want to make sure you're recording everything and this has about 10 more images because there were 12 images in the folder. So I'm going to go ahead and be back in just a minute and show you the results of how it's applying this action to that entire set of images. So I'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. And now that the action has finished its recording process, I'm going to go ahead and bring the folder of images into the active window so you can see what's happened here. And let's apply this to every image inside that folder. And if we were to go through and look at all of the images, you can see it's applied that copyright nicely to the entire set and it's dead center as well. Now if you didn't want it dead center, if you wanted your graphic down in a corner or something like that, uh, you could do that as well. But the important thing here that I also wanted to share with you is that notice how the images are different sizes. So if I go here to this panorama type image of this bridge, the copyright logo is still dead center relative to the image. And that's because of how I placed that when I was recording the action. And the same thing is happening with the border. You notice how the border is always relative to the image size as well. So that's just a way that you can create an action to expedite things for you and take these routine uh, tasks and uh, offload them to actions and scripts so that you have more time to do other things. That's it for this episode of the Canablogger.com Learning Digital Photography podcast series. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. The address, as always, is jason at Canablogger.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.